Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK and WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thank you so much, as always, for checking this out. You know what to do. If you uh, like what you see, like what you hear, hit that subscribe button and put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. I've got one of my favorites, Aaron Desner, on the line right now. Hello, sir. Hello. Thanks for having me again. Okay, oh, man. Yeah. I'm great. It's good to see you. And uh, and today we're talking about a new Big Red Machine record. How long do you think it's going to last? Um, it's been so much fun to kind of see this project grow and change in ways I didn't think I expected it to. Of course, the biggest difference uh, immediately that we hear on this uh, on this sophomore record is that you you change the focus of the lead voice. On the first one, it was mostly just Justin. Uh, but now it's everybody. How did that happen? Why did it yeah. happen? And, and, and more so, how do you keep a musical through line going for that long? Because it sounds still, it doesn't sound like a compilation. Yeah, I mean, I, I think to be honest, the, the whole idea of Big Red Machine, even the first record was to make it this sort of community of voices or like a multi, a multitude in a way. And there were, we were successful. There's so many, there were so many contributors to that record, but ultimately like, because Justin is the lead vocalist on most of, or all the songs, it feels like a Justin led record and and i guess it is but i think the way we think about big red machine is like it's it's this almost like a, a a a band but the windows and the doors are wide open and anybody you know anybody and everybody should pass through and you know, or it's or it's meant to be collaborative and and well, i generate most or all of the music initially and so there is like a connect a sort of a emotional thread through it from the music i think and but it really made sense this time to to include a sort of multitude of voices. And I think that it was, it's not the easiest type of record to make, to have it be cohesive, but by the, like, so we made a lot more songs than are actually on this record, but eventually we got to this place where it feels like there's, I don't know, like character, there's many characters in this book, but they're all singing about similar things and they're all interrelated. And it was really, it was really special. Um, And that's my daughter. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. He's bringing me some wine. Mm -hmm. Okay, you better go. (laughs) (laughs) That's terrible. I'm using my daughter to as as my wine wine delivery. Um, I'm in France, so it's like it's not midday here. It's it's in the evening. And it's France. Everything's swinging um, over there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's like bottle for lunch, whatever. But um, I think. Anyways, does that answer your question? I think yeah. it's not. I mean, Justin does sing on on many of the songs, but I think it's great that there's all these other voices, and that was kind of always the idea. So it feels much more fully realized this time. And I know that's become. I don't know if you're if it's your prime mode of working, but you, with the People Collective and and how you know you've been constructing records. I think even the you know the most recent national record was uh, uh, constructed a bit like that too. So that part's not surprising, but. But as you said, kind of figuring out how to make it cohesive, I think that was the, um, for me, that was kind of one of the biggest like, wow, moments uh, after hearing all of this. With with Justin's voice, though, I mean, we, we do hear Thank it you. in there and it blends so well with everyone's. As a producer, how do you approach that part of it? Um that's it's interesting like he's such a brilliant harmonist like and he's such a brilliant vocal like when you see him record his own vocals and how he does it and how he mix you know how he spreads them and <clears throat> it's really you can learn a lot but so i've had the I've, I've like been able to be a fly on the wall to see him work and but also like just having you know john lowe who's who engineered and mixed this record and we you know did all that done everything together for the last almost decade or so and i think we've just figured out over time how to like how to mix things where you get the real you get the tonality of each voice but and nobody's overwhelming each other but obviously you know justin has such a special voice but on this record you you don't want it to overwhelm others so like he's singing harmony with me on a bunch of songs like the song bracy which is 
where I sing the lead vocal, but Justin is there. And that was, I mean, it makes it easier for me to sing when you have someone like that harmonizing with you. But um, it was interesting to mix because like even at a low level, he's still very effective and you can kind of still tell it's him, you know. Um, but it was just, you know, each song was its own journey, I think. So we kind of figured it out. But I had a lot of time with this. So I was able, I do feel like I listen to it now and there's nothing about it that bugs me. Like I feel at peace with it, which is really nice, you know. Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, doing some lead vocals. And of course, um, uh, among those, the Ghost of Cincinnati uh, is like, it comes across to me as a dark song, but you still find a moment to pardon Pete Rose. So there's some levity that goes along <laughs> with it. <laughs> like yeah, what's yeah. going, where did that one come from? Um, it's, I mean, to be honest, it was, it's, it was a response to this, to a screenplay that I read by a young filmmaker from Ohio. Her name's Nicole Rigel. Um, she actually has an amazing film out right now called Holler, H-O-L-L-E-R, that's set in Eastern Ohio. But, um, and she had written about this, it's called Dandelion, and it was just this character, like a struggling songwriter in, in Cincinnati who's like, mother's terminally ill and like just kind of someone that's really kind of at the end of their luck and I you know having grown up in Cincinnati and having lost a lot of people in Cincinnati and you know seen a lot of trauma family trauma or you know just like just have a lot of memories or a lot of like water under the bridge in Cincinnati like it's just <clears throat> somehow this idea I just wrote this song and used some words out of the screenplay and also wrote some of my own and it's kind of like simultaneously about myself and about maybe my parents or about my you know or about other relatives or friends you know just people that when someone's really overextended to the point where um they're almost empty like a ghost and wandering around looking at people that that knew them or that loved them and but they can't those people can't see them anymore even though they're still alive and so it was this <clears throat> idea and i just yeah i just i wrote it but i wasn't necessarily going to be a big red machine song it just so happy it just it's just me playing the guitar it's not there are no other big red machine songs like it but justin heard it and taylor heard it and some other friends heard it and they were like this should be on the big red machine record it's like this is special. So, so there you go. It was, and it does feel related to everything else. So, um. yeah. Yeah. You, you've talked about those themes a little bit, uh, wrote down that you talked about themes the album, at least building around childhood, mental health, uh, familial dynamics. I, I hope that, and, and, and I should point out uh, a song called Hutch on here too, about uh, a mutual friend of ours, the late Scott Hutchinson. Um, so I hope the question isn't too blunt, but on those themes, why? Like why why was why were those the things that came to surface on this set? Um, <coughs> excuse me. I think. I mean, yeah. Like, I think it's known at this point that like I have struggled with depression myself, and and most you know, to be honest, most artists, most people I know um, intimately have had one form of mental health struggle or another it's like not uncommon it's just that it still is kind of like I don't know people don't talk about it enough or something so but um I think for me like as I started to write like Brycey was one of the first songs that was written for this record and I wrote the words and and my sister actually helped with the bridge but um and and I sing that song also and it's a, kind of like a tribute to my brother Bryce my mom calls him Bracey, um, but it's sort of a tribute to him because when I was, I was severely depressed when I was 17 and 18 years old and, and like, it hit me like a truck out of nowhere, you know, figuratively like a truck. And I, and it was not really prompted by anything. It was just like my brain chemistry just went into this like tailspin and he like refused to let me fall. He really like, held me up he was just like I mean we lived in the same room we shared a room until we were 18 so like literally when I wouldn't get out of bed or and I couldn't concentrate and I couldn't sleep and I couldn't I was having these crazy dark thoughts like he just was like made it his reason for being you know at that moment it was like I'm gonna get him out of this and so he like did my homework and you know it was like I was very lucky to have someone so close kind of looking out for me so this song you know when I was writing that song I just was I realized it's about 
that time and it's about thanking him for being there and, and like wishing he'll be there when we're like that we'll grow old together and um yeah so it was and then like I, I feel like other friends like Anais Mitchell when she heard that song and then when she was writing Latter Days in a different way it's also nostalgic for a time before you've lost your innocence or you know like when you before you've made some of the mistakes or missteps of adulthood and like kind of searching for remedies or clues in your past for how to live in the future and um we just it's just one thing led to another and it became this kind of like recurring theme and obviously hutch was the song hutch which is really about scott hutchison you know it was just he he when he disappeared and then when he was confirmed that he passed and took his own life like i was like everyone who knew him or didn't know him it's like incre it's always incredibly shocking and sad when you hear about that and in my case because i had produced their last record and the national had toured with them so much and like i spoke to him two weeks before um that happened and i guess i just was thinking about like did i miss clues or did i not ask how he was doing enough or did i you know how did it get so bad that i couldn't see it and you know so it's like just giving voice to those feelings you know or those questions in your mind and and the song itself like um you know it's dark but there's something cathartic and ultimately like almost angelic about it or something lisa hannigan and sharon van etten and sharon nova all sing so beautifully on it with justin and anyways but yeah so it is it is a subject but i feel like all of i don't know i feel like every song that i love in some weird way is kind of connected to how you feel or mental health you know like in some way and this is just maybe a little more overtly about it so yeah i i was happy to see the uh the hutch tribute on there too we um have a liner that i decided to keep in from scott's on wfbk just because every time it plays it's like oh hi scott you know to to, to kind of hear those moments again yeah uh, talk about mist, and then yeah. of course yeah. the whole crew on there. I mean, as you said, Sharon Van Etten, uh, Lisa Hannigan, Sharon Nova, all on that song. Among the many voices that you hear on this record, of course, I'm going to bring up one of the other vo big voices, and that's Taylor Swift, who the continued relationship finds its way after after two of her albums onto the Big Red Machine for a couple of songs on here. Um, considering the world that she operates in do you have to approach how you work with her differently uh, a song of hers than you would have anyone else's does it does it work different are the dynamics different not at all really i mean she's she is incredibly uh just kind and and very it's very natural like when she's you know Laura writing with her or, or making something with her she's feels exactly like working with someone you've known for a long time and are very comfortable with like she doesn't make you feel like it's a big deal or something just because she's more successful or anything like that she doesn't think that way really um at all so she, i think for her this was just like she found big red machine inspiring and she'd become part of our community in a way and um i was writing we were writing it writing you know finishing the big red machine music and she'd heard all the songs she loved birch and she joins justin on that song and really lifts it um and then when we finished evermore you know i never really stopped writing music i just kind of my natural state and like there was a song some music that i had written that was very clearly big red machine music and she loved it and she i think she just like it's like one day she just wrote renegade and sent it to me and you know it's like it is like getting you know, i've said this before but it's always like this weird lightning book because she's so it's just so good what she does what she's capable of and how she how she elucidates her ideas and her storytelling and like um but anyways it was yeah it was a it was i'm very thankful you know to have these collaborators that are so gifted it's like i don't know i feel like i don't know <laughs> i i sometimes feel like uh, you know uh i don't know how i ended up with being able to be in a band with such talented people but it's really i'm mean, really lucky yeah, well, I think it goes something to what you bring to the table. I mean, we've been such big fans of what you do this whole time as well. Uh, I, I did want to ask a bit more about uh, Renegade and Birch, too, because only the fact that, you know, here are songs that you've been a part of writing, but the fact that she's a part of them, they become part of a universe, you know, with her fans, how it becomes part of this whole 
Uh, everybody's looking for clues, you know, it, it, after Evermore, there were rumors at first that there was going to be a trilogy of albums and that was kind of shut down. But but does that kind of cross your mind as these songs that you're also writing are part of this universe now in that that sort of fandom way? Yeah, I mean, it, I, I I totally know what you mean, and it, I think it's fun. It's like her 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 fans are so passionate and kind of like enjoy the weird constellation of you know, like this Taylor's mind, you know, her lyrics and her. There are a lot of clues and kind of interconnected stories and things you can read in it's like um it's like this weird mythology or something that she's created and and like brilliant storytelling and um so of course like a song like renegade or or anything else we might do might i understand that but i think that's what's fun about music and about you know this art form it's just like and i love it. that's also the part of big red machine that is really kind of what i love is like when i grew up with listening to like like a scouring vinyl and stuff to see like who's playing that guitar solo on this song and who and like oh wow like why is jerry garcia appearing on every record in 1967 or whatever and like i always found that really exciting and kind of like gives things this weird like visceral kind of mythical energy or something so i like the fact i really love that like wow they like they made folklore and evermore and then like there's this other weird thing happening and like there's 29 musicians on this record and they all play on other records and i'd love to if you could just visualize all of that it's like that's what i i do like that about music or about the recorded artifact of like oh there's a lot of people have touched this thing and that's cool you know that's like interesting so it's not like some nobody cooked this up in some like whatever like Nobody was trying to make a hit record or something. It was just like weird community, like people bouncing off each other. And then there's a record, you know. Yeah. So. With all of those people, how are you going to tour this? Is that have you figured that part out yet? Um, I think no. And I, <laughs> I, I don't think there'll ever be a real tour, but I hope that someday there'll be like small you know like a couple shows or something and we document it and like really do it right you know i don't know where we could do that but like i think everybody that would be really amazing if we could all just show up and like play it play play the songs play all the songs the first record also and you know it'd be great so do you do you all with, with as many people now as a part of this do you keep a list is there is there like a wish list a dream list of like now that the doors are wide open um not really but like i think we love the the possibility of it you know i think it's and also it could just be that it's just this cast of characters keeps making songs together it feels really good you know but um yeah i don't know i don't really think it's like it, it's it's very organic like i i may i may not write anything good ever again or or like tomorrow i could write the best thing i've ever written or something so i don't know we'll see I expect that that'll be the thing, that there will be more great songs coming. I, I know that's going to be happening for you. I, I would be remiss if I also didn't ask <laughs> about the National. I mean, uh, is is that next? Is that in the future? Are we still getting music from the National? I, th I, I feel certain that the National will rise again um, in some way. And um, there is a lot of idea. There are a lot of ideas. And and i miss those guys so uh, i see my brother and i've seen seen all of them but i think at some point it would be nice just to like feel that thing you know um again but it's been good also to have a break from it and like in a way like we toured for 20 years basically and all the wreckage of that and all the you know all the positives and all the negatives we've kind of seen them all and um and having a break that was in because of the pandemic has been a good thing in a way like i think it's this like a reset and then like at some point we'll fire it back up but it is it's like it's weird it's like it does feel like where is it where's my where where are those guys you know um and like it's weird not to have played the songs in so long i don't know if i'm going to remember how to play them but i hope so <laughs> well that's that's what i wondered like if, sure if, if in your mind 
you still have a thought like, oh, this is my main gig and this is my other gig? Or is everything now well blended where it's just music and forward? Yeah, it's very well blended. It's like mu music and forward. And I mean, I still feel like the best stuff that I've ever made is with the National or it's like those are my people or something, you know, and that's how I learned to do what I do and um, have a tremendous amount of respect for each one of them. Um, so, but I think it's also good that we have been able to kind of like woodshed away from each other and figure out and learn, you know, like meet new people and make so much music and that's all really positive, I think. But I, I think there will, it's a weird band, like, for us to make something that is that we love it takes like weird stars have to align and we have to really like feel it but hopefully it'll it will get there so yeah we'll see well i look forward always to seeing what you do next uh, again you know i'm such a big fan of what you do in in the national especially in big red machine this has been such a fun project to listen to in this record how long do you think it's going to last uh and and i'm especially interested to hear more of of you as the vocalist too because uh the the songs that you do on here are so good they're so good so you know thank you for thank continuing you so much. man thank yeah. you <laughs> was, yeah uh, I'll, I'll try not to hide, hide out so much but it is weird. It's like, not like I feel like I'm going to be like some great singer all of a sudden, but I'll, I'll like, I'll pipe up when I have an idea. <laughs> awesome. Aaron, it was great talking to you again, man. Yep. Um, take care. And, uh, and hopefully we'll Thank see you, you around soon. Cool. All right. Thank Bye. you so much. All right. See you. Bye. Take care.